All right, so this is the last video I'm filming. And this one's gonna try to convey some of the things I wanted to get done that I didn't get done. So that hopefully the next person can come in here and be productive from the beginning with some ideas as to what they could do. The first thing is this table right here. That um, it's not even close to being done. It needs to be squared up. This stuff is not square at all. It needs to be mounted into the floor down here. Um, so I think once that's squared up and once it's mounted in, it'll be a little bit sturdier. Some you know cross brackets can be put in here. And then the real purpose of this table was to uh, mount the cold cut saw onto here. So this needs to be squared, measured better. Um, and then if you look at the bottom of the cold cut saw down there, there are actually little holes in there that I believe you could mount through here and get a nice little place to work. And then I was envisioning a uh, tabletop, perhaps from Grizzly, perhaps from elsewhere, being mounted on this space, kind of um, coming out to here, running around, then coming down and moving back that way. So we need to have a hole cut in it for this bar. And then, you know, some cool stuff can be mounted on this bar, I think. Uh, there would also need to be a plate put onto here to protect all this wiring back here. Uh, and I envision that uh, little drill mill getting moved over here and the bandsaw being put where the drill mill is. So that's a, a call for someone else to make, I guess. Um, this next thing is that uh, up here with the uh, deburring device, it's not mounted high enough right now. It hangs too low. So there just needs to be some unistrut put up there to lift that up somehow. Um, so that it really hangs out of the way and then can be pulled down only when it's needed. Uh, the computers need some new drivers on them to help their graphics cards work properly. They uh, don't seem to be living up to their full potential even though they work fine. They also need to be set up to work with HSM Pro. Uh, there's a licensed server somewhere, it just needs to be made to work. And finally they need to be set up with um, the general user login so that it's using your Georgia Tech login rather than just some junky local thing. Uh, my plan for these clipboards was to put a maintenance schedule on them to where, you know, whoever's in here can sign off that maintenance has been done so everybody knows that it's being kept up with. So, you know, all the way from like the daily, you know, cleaning up of the mill in the afternoon up through, um, you know, stuff like every however many hours the lathe, all the oil needs to be taken out of the uh, lathe head and drained and replaced. So I think it'd be nice to have all that sort of stuff written down. And I've actually got a file that has most set on it. I just haven't quite gotten to finishing it, putting it together and printing it out. So shoot me an email and I'll send that to you. The next thing is that the air hose, which is in this box, needs to be run from that little manifold up there, down here, down there a little bit, come across by the light, drop down the wall, um, get hooked into this. This needs to be mounted onto the wall somewhere so people can control pressure as they need it. And then it needs to have a little hose connected into here. Uh, with this thing, it needs to be cleaned out still. It's got foam and all sorts of different junk in there. And it'd be nice to take things like the mask and whatever else and mount them up on the wall somewhere. Um, this stuff over here still needs to be mounted up, so the apron and gloves and whatever. And there are these, uh, uh, they're for paper towels, they're paper towel holders that need to be mounted up on the walls, there are a few throughout the shop. Um, going out towards the storage thing, I think this one's mostly done. It does, however, need to have this sign mounted in a nicer manner. It has some stuff over here that needs to be labeled. It's none of that's labeled. And it's also got like a junk bin down here that needs to be sorted through, put wherever it needs to go and labeled as well. Um, this aluminum also all needs to be labeled. It currently does not say what it is. It's all 6061T6, by the way. Um, and then lastly, there needs to be a sign put on here saying, you know, what this is for. And I essentially envisioned it as a, you know, this is the you need something now and not tomorrow. So you use it out here today and you order it today to replace whatever you're using. And then your stuff shows up in a couple days and you put it back in here so that when somebody else needs it, it's not a problem. They can go in and they can do the exact same thing. That way, nobody's ever waiting for parts to come in. It's always kind of has that bumper there. Uh, the next thing is I bought, tried to buy a whiteboard and I thought I bought it, but they didn't ship it. Um, they canceled the order on us. But I do have this stuff. So I was envisioning having a whiteboard here to where, you know, when someone's printing, they can say who they are, what they're printing, when it should be taken off, whatever, where to contact them just so that things don't end up getting left on here and holding people up. Um, with the MakerBot, I envisioned having, or actually Marty and I talked about having uh, like 
bunch of filament up here. So just kind of a rack of spools of filament to where anybody who wanted to could grab any color they needed and pull it down and just throw it right inside. And that would be pretty neat. I had bought this spray mister to uh, help with the mill, especially with how gummy aluminum is. I think it'd be really helpful to have somewhere you can direct an airflow precisely and also keep it kind of cool. Um, but I haven't gotten it set up yet. I actually have designs. I might even have the uh, cam work to, uh, to make a holder that it's supposed to fit. It's down around the collar here. And um, it was gonna have actually little LED lights in it as well to give some lighting. But I haven't built it yet. So if you want those designs, please let me know. We also have this foam here. The idea was to make foam tool holders, custom make them. We were buying these, got these blank samples and we we're gonna use a router over in the um, College of Computing, one of their shops over at Technology Square to uh, try to make our own tool holders. I didn't get around to it, unfortunately, but maybe somebody else can. And for those labels I'll show you outside, that can be done with this label maker and these labels right here. I also had wanted to buy some new tooling for the shop that we were planning on getting from Technical Tooling Systems, and we have a manual here uh, from them, or a uh, catalog from them that's 50% off everything. I didn't get around to that. We also wanted to buy a bunch more stuff from Shars, stuff like parallels, you know, some basic stuff that we don't have, maybe some more vices, uh, some different measuring tools, whatever. I didn't get around to that either. I also wanted to label all these cabinets and the toolboxes. You can actually slide stuff in right there with laser cut anodized aluminum, which went somewhere and I don't quite know where. I'll find it and put it back in here. But anyhow, I was gonna cut it and then laser cut it, or maybe the other way around, uh, to be able to make some really, really nice labels. Maybe put a label on the door similar to that. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Oh wait, no, one last thing. I came up with a order from McMaster to have a little sensor that would sit back here and detect when this piece moved. And when it moved, it was had a little, uh, a little valve that would activate this so it could just be left pressurized and then when everything moved, it would turn on and that would automatically uh, connect the circuit for the big blower. So you would never have to worry about it. You could just run the printer and it would always just do essentially what needed to be done. And that I am pretty certain is, nope, no it's not. Um, we had an order in here from MSC. I don't know, somewhere in here. You can talk to Marty about it. Probably this one down here. That had a bunch of junk that um, was just low quality. Stuff like these plastic calibers, which I mean, I can literally bend. Um, like they're the lowest quality thing ever. And a nicer pair of calipers back here that doesn't even turn on anymore. Uh, this little hand tap here that costs nearly $300 and is clearly not worth that much. I mean, these are, it's pathetic. And then they also had an order that we had sent them that in, included a uh, MSDS you know, safety binder, and they didn't ship that. So I've got a bunch of MSDS sh sheets sitting here with no binder to put them in. So it'd be nice to eventually get that at some point. So it'd be cool to follow up with them and see. Um, I'd been emailing one of their guys and he had said he would try to help us, but I never did, was able to finish with that. We were also looking at getting 3D mice for the um, computers, essentially their mouse where you can uh, go like this and like this and like that and like that and then also up and down so you get full access control for your SOLIDWORKS and whatever. And there was a guy I was emailing with about that and he actually wanted to come out and see the shop, see if he could maybe get some samples, maybe put some stuff into Whitaker as well. But we did not get around to setting a firm date and I won't be here obviously so that won't happen. But I wish you the best of luck. I hope that the shop keeps getting cooler and getting better stocked. I think it definitely will. Uh, I think it's got a it'll be a very, very cool shop. Small little space, but it has some really, really nice equipment. So let me know if you ever have any questions as to something that I've done or any thoughts I might have on anything. And I'll be back in a semester, I guess.
Have fun.